I love making an occasion out of brunch, and I think that's in part because there are no rules. Anna Olson. After all, we're blending breakfast and lunch together, so when it comes time to plan dessert, let's do the same thing. Mix breakfast with dessert and my chocolate chip waffle layer cake with peanut butter frosting and salted caramel bananas, well, that takes brunch over the top. And it starts with a fundamental waffle batter. So even if you're not making this waffle cake, this is a great recipe. I have three cups of all-purpose flour, and I'll add to that three tablespoons of sugar, and I have a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. She adds them in. Give this a quick little whisk. And making this waffle batter is as easy as making a pancake batter. Lots of liquid, three cups of buttermilk. She pours that on her dry ingredients. I'll also add three eggs and half a cup of melted butter. In goes two teaspoons of vanilla. I'll save this here because I need it for the peanut butter frosting. I'll just give this a light whisk. Like pancake batter, your waffle batter doesn't have to be completely smooth. It can have a couple of lumps. This is a great basic waffle batter, and with only three tablespoons of sugar, it's not even that sweet. But I am turning this into dessert, so I'll add one cup of mini chocolate chips. I like to use the mini chips when making waffles because if you use the large size chips, they could burn. So these fit into the little waffles of the waffle iron. She finishes mixing. All right. I've got my waffle iron preheated. And if you have a square waffle iron, well, you'll end up with a square cake. Mine are round. It's totally up to you, whatever you have. I have preheated it. I find this recipe generally makes four to six waffles. Of course, depending on the size of your iron. I always budget one test waffle because you have to figure out how much batter fits in. Give that a close and a flip. Hit the timer. And in goes a second. You can make these waffles a day ahead if you wish, and you can store them frozen and then assemble the cake when it's convenient. And that takes a big step out of the process if you're getting ready for brunch. What is important is after the waffles are done, you want to cool them on a rack over a tray. You don't want to put them directly on the tray because the heat will create condensation and you'll lose that beautiful crisp outside to your waffles. And when she has enough. So to make my waffle cake, I use four waffles. I think I always pick which one that will be. That's my test waffle. You can always snack on it and I'll use these four. So while I let these cool, let's make that peanut butter frosting. She gathers her ingredients, which have all been pre-measured and are on plates. This waffle cake is all about gooey decadence. That combination of peanut butter and caramel and bananas and the chocolate chip waffles, ugh, totally decadent. I have two packages, 500 grams of cream cheese here. And I'll add to that a full cup of peanut butter. And you just wanna beat these two together until they're smooth. She uses a hand mixer for this. And once they're mixed... I'll add one cup of icing sugar, and I'll beat this in. And you may find at this point it is not smooth, but don't worry. And once again, with everything thoroughly incorporated... This is a little dense as a frosting, so what I like to do is add three tablespoons of whipping cream and a splash of vanilla. And a few minutes later, as she removes the beaters from her mixer. And if you're wondering if this might work as a frosting on top of cupcakes, the answer is 100% yes. Delicious, especially on chocolate cupcakes. She scrapes down the sides of her bowl with a spatula. Now to get the bananas ready. She grabs a knife and a bunch and pulls one off. Four bananas is usually enough for this cake, and you want them... She peels it. ...not to be banana bread or banana muffin ripe, but a little bit firm. She coins it. Just slice them up right before it's time to assemble the waffle cake. And with that done... And now I'm just going to add a generous squeeze of my sea salt caramel sauce just to coat the bananas. This keeps them from going brown, so at least you can assemble the waffle cake before you sit down to brunch. She puts the squeeze bottle down there we go. and mixes the caramel and bananas. Mm. 
beautiful. Peanut butter, banana, caramel, chocolate chip waffles. Let's build this cake. She plates a waffle. Put a generous dollop of frosting. And of course, when you spread the frosting, it fills all the little squares of the waffle. She does that with an offset knife. It looks amazing when you cut into it. You can see the little squares of the peanut butter frosting. And now, just a nice even layer of the bananas. Doesn't have to be too much. The bananas add a lot of height to this waffle cake. Now for the next waffle. She tops the first one of frosting. The great thing is the cream cheese keeps this frosting from tasting too sweet. Then more bananas. And if you get drips of caramel running off of the bananas, go with it. That just makes it more appealing. <laughs> get it appealing. Now she crowns the waffle tower. Last waffle. Then frosts it. For the top, I don't spread it right to the sides. I want to build some height in the center here. Then more fruit. Let the bananas on top just find their place. And finally, more caramel. Wow, a stunning cake without turning on the oven. And oh, it's just so appetizing. This is over the top decadent. So make sure you warn your brunch guests to save room for dessert. They will not even believe it. I really hope you try making this recipe because it's great fun. And in fact, this would be a wonderful one to make with or for the kids. So jump right in there. Have a great brunch. Make an occasion out of baking.